Hi guys, today I wanted to go over a video going over what flatbacks are. Oh, and uh, also happy 4th of July for those of you enjoying a weekend, extended weekend. Anyways, uh, let's get started. So flatbacks are a way to install applications and packages in a Linux system that are containerized. What does that mean? Well, think of... what's it called? Okay, think of snaps and app images, or basically think of any container. A container is basically when you have a certain software or set of software packages that are installed inside a sandboxed environment such that it allows you to control them with better security, manage their dependencies, and also basically lock them in an own... It, it's almost like a virtual machine, They're, except not as in-depth as a virtual machine. They're basically locked in a subset of your OS so that they're kind of packaged up. Basically they're contained. Okay, that was a whole explanation. Anyways, let's just move on. Yeah, Flatpak is a management utility that allows you to distribute, install and manage software, worrying about dependencies, runtime, or what distribution you're running. So for example, if you have packages that are based on Debian or Arch that can't normally install on the other system, a Flatpak can install it. So for instance, LibreWolf. I know the version of LibreWolf on Debian is a lot older than the one on Arch, but the Flatpak version is the latest version and can be installed on Debian-based or even Ubuntu-based systems. And how does it basically work? So this is basically an example of a container. The application is in a Flatpak, so it has the data, the code, the dependencies, all in a container. And that's for each application, which is separate from the host runtime of your operating system. So if anything goes wrong in each application, it doesn't break other ones because it's in a container. It's basically its own, it's in its own little world, so it doesn't spread any problems or... A lot of basic malware also tend to get stored in the container, so... Say if one application breaks or gets infected, it will not spread to other ones or your host system. Now when I say malware, I'm talking about like basic stuff, not anything like that's more advanced nowadays. Nowadays, there's plenty of malware that'll break a container and spread out all over your system, but for most bare bones ones, a container is good enough. So, yeah, they basically run in an isolated environment referred to a sandbox. It contains everything needed to run a program, and the advantage to this is that, say, you wanted to update one specific program, but not the others, and they share like dependencies with each other. Because they're stored within each container, you can update one container without updating the dependencies for the other ones. So this allows one application to be more up to date while the other ones can be more stable. And even if they share dependencies, because each container has its own version of a dependency installed, they will not conflict with each other, therefore they will not break each other. And yeah, basically to install a flat pack on your system, you need to install the flat pack. What's it called? Flat the flat pack software. So let me just uh, show you how to get it set up. So go to flatpacks.com, quick setup, and depending on what operating system you have, this only works for Linux distros and Chrome OS. Basically, go in your terminal or go to your settings, do what it tells you to do, and you will be able to install it. Certain operating systems like Linux Mint that I'm running come with it pre installed and enabled. So I didn't have to do any of this, but say you're running Arch, just type in sudo pacman-s flatpak and then restart your system. Or if you're running Ubuntu or anything Ubuntu based, sudo apt install flatpak and that should be enough. While for older Ubuntu ones before 18.10, add the repo and then install it after an update. Make sure you install the flatpak plugin. And then you have to add the repository. Flatpaks cannot work without a repository, also called a remote. And in this case, the one I am using is Flathub. It's the only repo that I know of. I know there are other repos, remotes for flat for Flatpaks out there, but Flathub was the easiest one that I can find, and I used it to install Firefox. So let me just go over. If I see Firefox version it says Firefox is not installed in my system so if I were to install it in my system normally I would have to do sudo apt install Firefox however 
and if I try to just type in Firefox, it's not going to run. But let me show you, I do indeed have Firefox on my system. Go here, help, about Firefox, and yeah, I have a Firefox as a flat pack installed on my system, version 89.02. Now you might be wondering, how do I have Firefox but it doesn't show up on my terminal? That's because I installed it via Flatpak, and in order to run it via CLI from a Flatpak, you have to do the following. Let me just go down. So to run a Flatpak that's installed, okay, first just search a Flatpak on your system, type in Flatpak, list. This will show you a list of every, not just the software, the package, but also its dependencies. So Mesa, NVIDIA 460, Open H264, the theme, free desktop platform. These are all the dependencies that came with Firefox when I installed it via Flatpak. I already had these a lot of these dependencies on my system to begin with, but these ones are the ones contained in the Flatpak. These are separate from my system. So the version of NVIDIA I'm running is 460 point. That's a different one. Let me see, hang on. Let me see if I can show which one. Just give me a sec. Okay, never mind. It's the same one. So, hmm. I do know that I do not have Mesa in my system because I'm using it. Actually, no, that's not true. I do have Mesa. What was I thinking? But I know I do not have the Mint Y GTK theme. That I don't have. But for Firefox to run and install it for me anyways. But if I want to see a list of only the packages and not the dependencies, you type in Flatpak, list, double dash, app. And there you go, it shows that I have Firefox with the application ID. This is very important if you want to install Flatpak. You use it, you have to do it via the application ID, not the name. And let's just say you want to search for them. So. Flatpak, search, Firefox. The search function only works based on the repos you have, the remotes. So because I have Flathub installed on my system that's connected to Flatpak, it's only going to search through Flathub to find versions of Firefox installed. And as you can see, I have LibreWolf, one of the latest version, as well as other Firefox alternatives I can install, including Firefox itself. So if I wanted to run a flat pack, flat pack, run, and you have to type in, yeah, you have to type in the application ID. So hang on, flat pack, list, Oh, I spelled flat pack. Oh, hang on. Flat pack list dash dash app. Okay, so it's org.mozilla.firefox. So flat pack run and org.mozilla.firefox. And it loads up Firefox. Now you could automate this. Well, not automate this. You could make this more convenient by creating a shortcut on your system to run it with. Thankfully for Firefox and most Flatpaks from Flathub, when you install them via Flatpak, they will create a shortcut on your system. I know it's on my second screen, but if I just go under internet, Firefox is listed, so I don't have to type it via CLI. But if you want to open it via CLI, you type in Flatpak, run, and then the application ID off the package you want to run. So org Mozilla Firefox, that's the application ID for Firefox. Now let's say you want to install one. Now let's just go back to a flat pack. Search. Actually let me just say. If I type in LibreWolf, I don't have it on my system. And there's no way to install it. Actually there is a way but you have to install the open SUSE repos repositories in order to do it. But via Flatpak, I can do it this way. First, let's search for it. Flatpak, search, LibreWolf. And there it is. And here's the application ID. 
which I need to install it. So, to install it, just type in Flatpak, install, and then copy and paste the application ID. And yeah, it finds it in my remote, Flathub. I'm using Flathub as my repository. Flatpak calls them remote, but they're basically repositories where you're downloading it from. Press Y. And then here's the uh, dependencies it's installing. And it'll be installing this version of uh, Leave the Wolf, so press yes. Notice it's installing free desktop dot platform again because it already did that for Firefox but because they're all containerized each separate container has its own version of its dependency so even though I have it on my system and on the Firefox container the LibreWolf container is a new one so it doesn't have it now here's one major drawback to flat packs I'll go over more drawbacks later but one of the biggest ones is that they tend to be very space heavy because you're reinstalling different dependency the same dependencies for each container they tend to take up a lot of space if you install too many of them so don't install too many flat packs unless you're trying to use it for like a few special software that you can't get normally via the repos or something that breaks very often if you're installing it normally so for that reason a flat pack might be better but if you're installing everything via flat packs that's going to take up so much space on your hard drive it's not going to be very beneficial but the biggest advantage is it takes away from the dependency hell, so if you have a lot of dependencies and they conflict with each other, flat packs allow you to avoid that easily. Now let's go see if it's installed. And yes, now we have LibreWolf. And let's see if the icon for that or the shortcut is there. And you can't see it because I'm on I'm recording my second screen, but it is. If I go to an internet and then LibreWolf, it's there. And I turned it on. And here you go. Here's LibreWolf. Help about LibreWolf. There you go, version 8.9. And it's gonna stay up to. Or yeah, there's a way to update flat packs as well. It's actually one of the best advantages for flat pack over something like app images or other containers. When most containers, like with Docker, do allow you to update, but you have to do them. I think one at a time unless you're using some server software and for using app images there's not really a way to update them unless you're installing the binaries so if you want to update an app image you have to just reinstall it manually the latest one but with flat packs you can do all your updates very easily flat pack update and if there were any updates available it would just update all my applications and if there was a, anything that broke via update, just type in flatpak update-v and it says there's nothing to do, but yes, if there was any broken dependencies or anything that broke in the container, update-v would do it if it's something easy to break, I mean easy to uh, fix. If you want something that's a little more uh, in-depth, just type in flatpak and repair. And it will go over each runtime dependency and application, verify it if there's anything broken, it will repair it. This is a more in-depth version. And if you have any problems, just type in Flatpak Repair. And if this doesn't work, then just reinstall the Flatpak. Though that should be very rare. And this is another advantage with Flatpaks is that for the most part, they do have more up-to-date versions of software. Like the only other place you would find the most up-to-date versions of software found in Flatpaks would be the Arch user repository. But Flatpaks, because they're also containerized, tend to be a little more uh, neat, more clean, and they tend to break less often than the Aura user repository, the Arch user repository. So yeah, that is another advantage of using Flatpaks. Plus, they're not exclusive to the Arch Linux distro. I know there's the Debian user repository, which is the Arch user repository ported to Debian, but that only has 20 packages right now. Whereas Flathub has over a thousand, and there are other repos as well. And if you want to just see the history of the flat packs you've installed, just type in flat pack history. 
And I'll go over your history, assuming you haven't cleared your cache. Let me just go over these really quickly, I'm not trying to do a long one. There are ways to change permissions, like if you want a certain container, a certain flat pack to access more files in your system than allowed. For that you would go to the flat pack, permissions, I think. But I'm gonna go over a second video on how to do a uh, permissions with flat pack. Right now I'm not gonna go over that one. But if you just want to reset permissions, just type in flat pack, permission, space reset. And then the application ID, so org.mozilla.firefox, and this will reset your permissions to how they were once once you install them. Firefox, I mean. But yeah, just permission reset, that will reset your permissions. Now if you want to see what repository the remotes you Sorry about that. Now if you want to see what uh, repositories you have on your system for flat packs, just type in flat pack remotes and as you can see I have the flat hub repository installed so if you want to add more the, the list would be bigger but right now I only have flat hub and if you want to delete a repository just type in flat pack remote dash delete and then flat hub and this would delete flat hub from my repository my remote list but because it's the only one I have I'm not doing this and if you want to uninstall a flat pack, so let's just say I want to uninstall LibreWolf. So I would do, I would type in flat pack list app to get the application ID. And then I would type in flat pack uninstall io.gitlab, basically what it says, the application ID for LibreWolf. Um, actually let me see, let me just uninstall Firefox. Because I know so, now that I have LibreWolf I won't use Firefox, so. And just press yes and it will uninstall Firefox from your system. So if I type in flatpak list dash app, I now only have LibreWolf. And if I check my uh, internet, yeah, Firefox is gone from there. But the dependencies for Firefox are still there. The container is still there. So probably type in flatpak list. As you can see, LibreWolf only installed free de free desktop platform. But Nvidia, Mesa, and a lot of the other like Mint Y GTK theme, these dependencies for Firefox are still here. So to remove them, you can do to remove the unused dependencies. Just type the following flatpak uninstall doubles dash unused. Oh, never mind. I guess these are also used by LibreWolf. Never mind then. But if there were any uh, spare dependencies, you could just uh, just type in this command and it will get rid of them. So that's all I want to really go over with flat packs. And if you want to know more information about them, just type in man flat pack. I'll show you everything. Q to exit. And yeah, let me just uh, bring back the uh, flat hub repository. This has literally every, well, not every, it has over a thousand. So we go to all, it has over a thousand flat packs. Now let me go over some common ones. It has Audacity, Ardor if you don't want Audacity, Celluloid, Cheese, Clementine, and there is yeah it has Handbrake if you want to modify videos and video files. It has Caden Live, Library, Cody, LLMMS for advanced music music editing. It has MPV. OBS, OpenShot, Olive. Now, it doesn't have the exact latest version of Olive, though it has the latest state version, so the version 1.2, so that's pretty good. It has Power ISO, and this is the thing that interested me about Flatpaks the most. It has Shotcut. Right now, I use Shotcut via, what's it called? App Image. 
but this has the latest version of Shotcut, which is more recent than my current one, and I can update it via CLI, so I don't have to keep installing app images. It was updated very recently, so that's actually very good for, it's one benefit to using flat packs. Um, let me see, what else is there? There are developer tools, the BlueJ, Sea Lion, Bluefish, Atom, Arduino, IDE, Eclipse, Genie, Git Kraken, there's Git Ignore, GNU Emacs, Godot, and it has the latest version of Godot, so that's pretty good. Uh, it's got a lot of other things too. Notepad QQ. Uh, let's just go. Yeah, it's got Sublime Text. Visual Studio Code is also here. And Visual Studio Codium. And it also has the Unity Game Hub, so you can install versions of the Unity Game Engine. It's got Education for Science. It's got Games, though most of these are uh, GNU games. Graphics and Photography. It's got Blender. It's got the latest version of Blender, version 2.93, the latest stable one. Because if you try to install Blender via the Debian repos or the Ubuntu repos, that's version 2.83 I believe. That's an older version, so it's got the latest version of Blender. Darktable, I know it has GIMP and a few others. Yeah, GIMP, Glimpse, the fork of GIMP which never really went anywhere. It's got Inkscape, it's got Krita, it's got Material Maker, Natron, it's got a photogrammetry tree tool, pop out 3D, so you can take pictures and make uh, 3D models out of it. Communication, it's got a bird tray, Beaker, the Beaker browser. This one is an older version, it's version 0.8, the most recent version is version 1. something, I believe, 1.11. That's because this hasn't been updated in over a year. So be careful, not everything will be mo the most up to date. Some things like the Beaker, you are better off downloading it or making it via binary. But for most other things like Firefox or Discord even, or Element, these are the very up to date. So yeah, I'm not gonna go over everything, just uh, some of the things here. There's also the Tor browser. There's Pigeon, there's Qt Browser, there's a Qbit Torrent, RetroShare. There's a lot of things here. Um, yeah, Telegram, Tor, Fiber, etc. Anyways, so that's all I wanted to go over with the flat packs. Oh yeah, some downsides. There are some major downsides. Some downsides for using flat pack. One of them was that they were uh, very big. They tend to be heavier than most uh, installs from source. Another disadvantage is they're not available for Windows, Mac, or BSD systems, or any other systems. These are Linux exclusive. They can only work on Linux systems and Chrome OS. Another downside is that sometimes they conflict with your themes that you have on, on your system. So if you have like a dark theme or a custom theme, because flat packs are, you know, containers, they don't have the same theme that you have, so they will conflict. And sometimes, because they're containerized, unless you give them specific permissions, by default they won't be able to utilize all the sources in your system, all the features of your system, or even the hardware. So even though I had Firefox, if I wanted to attach, download some, export something to a USB, that Firefox version would not allow me to do so because it's in a container, unless I give it specific permissions. And they also do allow proprietary software. So some of the things in FlatHub are proprietary, like the Unity Hub. So you probably don't want to use that. Some dependencies may also be proprietary, so just keep that in mind. If you want a secure system, FlatHub is great, but if you want a privacy-based system or something that's like completely free, like the whole free system, flat, flat packs may not be what you're looking for. And yeah, that's basically it. But besides that, they are very secure, they are sandboxed, they are distro agnostic, they can run on any Linux distro, despite being Linux exclusive. So those are some of the advantages. 
Anyways, I hope you guys have a good one. That's all I want to cover for now. Peace out.